so what I have here is my crescent render sketchbook and this is the only one that I have um, I keep meaning to buy more of these because I like them I like the non-bleeding um, but I think the one caveat is the paper is not completely white and I think anyone that has a render sketchbook will notice that that the paper kind of has a gray tinge to it but uh, other than that, let's get started. So, first page is just a, a introductory doodle because for me personally, the first page is very intimidating. So, I never really normally do anything on that page. I usually leave it blank. But I think this particular time, I decided, you know, I'm going to go in, I'm going to draw something, <laughs> I don't care if it's good or bad. And so I went with a sort of uh, woodland theme, I think. <laughs> uh, it's been a while, but, uh, you know, very much dreadlock hair with florals and moths and leaf motifs and I think this was basically the first page of me just doodling with Copic markers because with my other sketchbooks I started off with spectrum noir markers which are okay but they bleed a lot so I'm pretty sure this is the first sketchbook that I used with the Copic markers that I bought that's entirely Copic based so here you'll see a lot of <laughs> me having fun with white gel pen and I think the interesting thing with Copic markers is that you can put white gel pen on top of it but it won't stay pure white so you'll see on a lot of these flowers that the white gel pen has basically uh, dried down to a very muted uh, pinkish white is basically taking on the characteristics of the marker under it which is pretty interesting but you know I don't think that's what I intended when I first did this so next page um this was me experimenting with colored shadows and I did a portrait of Garnet from Steven Universe and lunch or launch I don't remember which way it's pronounced from Dragon Ball Z uh, the girl that sneezes and changes her entire personality <laughs> which I think is pretty hilarious because it's just very typical of women and their emotive natures it's pretty funny but uh basically what I was doing was uh using a lot of color in the shadows because normally like and you'll see here when I draw um like if I do a pink flower, I'll do pink shadow over top of it, you know, and basically shade it in with the same general tone. But here I was experimenting with, you know, uh, layering color and having a different shadow color from the actual object. So in this case, it's a pink suc succulent with a green shadow across the edge of it. And that was basically me playing around with that for a while because I don't normally do that very often. I'm very matchy-matchy when it comes to colors. <laughs> so, you know, doing a opposite colored shadow is something I need to practice because I know with me, if I go in without a plan, <laughs> a lot of times the colors will come up, you know, in the finished product as being really wonky and, you know, not very cohesive as a unit. So... In my sketchbook, I like to play around with things like that and get an idea of how it works first before I mess around with any final, you know, full pieces. On this back page, I was just messing around with uh, patterns, which I do a lot. Like you'll see here a uh, <clears throat> plaid pattern and layering a gel pen over top of colors. And I'll do that a lot. Like, for here, you see a pattern on her shirt, and most of the time, 
when I'm doing patterns and things like that, I'll experiment on a separate page and get an idea of what it looks like. So throughout my sketchbook, you'll see a lot of this, a lot of <laughs> me basically testing stuff out and seeing if it looks good or if the colors mesh well or, you know, to try to get a certain pattern or a certain look flawlessly. I tend to mess stuff up like that a lot. I'll just, if I just go in, like I said, it'll just turn out really, really awful. <laughs> So in this case, um, it's basically a girl in a teacup and she's wearing a sort of lingerie-ish clothing and I do that sometimes because I'll draw bodies and they'll look perfect, like flawlessly, like model-esque and like coke bottle curvy and I just hesitate to put clothes on them <laughs> because I like it better, you know, I like seeing the curves and seeing how flawlessly I did the anatomy. So this is one of those cases where I was like, you know, I'm not going to put a whole lot of clothes on her because the point is to see the curves and, you know, have it mimic the curves of the teapot and the tea set. Uh, I don't know. That's just what I prefer sometimes is not put clothes on people <laughs> because I struggle so hard with curvy anatomy and making it look good that I'm just like, I don't want to do that. So next, uh, more practices with skin tones. And this is where I started really getting into, uh, I guess just doing undertones in general um, because in the past I would just color all the skin in in one shade and that was it. So this is me kind of layering the marker and trying to get those you know harsh shadows and you know very cut uh, light areas just to see what it looks like because I don't do that very often. I tend to like my skin to be smooth, so these are not typical, just me messing around to see what they look like when they are harsh and how harsh they would be with, you know, a limited range of color. And you can see on the lighter skins, it's very much a very cut and chiseled uh, shadow, but on the darker tones, it's a little bit more muted. Here we go with more random pages of naked bodies <laughs> because I do that a lot. Like I'll start drawing something and then if I don't like it, I'll just flip to the next page. So you'll see a lot of that in my sketchbook, just a lot of used up paper <laughs> and sketches that I never go back to because I don't know, if I don't like it, it'll just sit there. This was a redraw of an old sketch in another sketchbook and I think I kept meaning to eventually color it but I never did because with stuff like this if it's a really nice finished product I'll generally trace it to another page and color it because I don't want to mess up the lines in the sketchbook you know I want to keep that as intact as possible so I can, you know, sketch it onto another sheet as many times as I want because once it's colored in, as you'll see with a lot of the past pages, like, <laughs> you know, you can trace it to another page, but I feel like once it's colored in, that it's done. <laughs> so, uh, in this case, I was doing sort of a geisha look, but the idea was uh, red, white, and blue colors for some reason. So, she was going to have blonde hair and be a blonde American-esque. Uh, looking geisha but I never got around to coloring that which I might have to revisit uh, more pencil sketches this is actually of uh, Bunny I think her name is she's the uh, YouTube influencer graveyard girl but uh, sometimes I will draw youtubers specifically in her case if I feel that they have very expressive facial uh, expressions because that's what I struggle with like if you're an expressive person in the face then I might end up drawing you because expressions are something I struggle with I think most artists struggle with that you know getting an expression to look a certain way and I don't think I succeeded here I don't know what I was going for with her but <laughs> it looks very comical and funny 
and I like it. Uh, here, I was going to enter a contest, and it was for, I think it was a mushroom festival somewhere. Uh, back when I was getting heavy into graphic design and I wanted to do a whole drawing and thought it'd be fun to do you know different types of mushrooms because mushrooms and frogs are two of my favorite things uh, when it comes to uh, reference photos and things that are interesting like I have an entire Pinterest board of frogs, plant life, succulents, mushrooms, things like that because I think they're just pretty interesting to draw. They come in a lot of shapes and sizes and this was me drawing a couple of different types of mushrooms. Oh, and you also notice that I tend to uh, write down the names of things just so that, you know, if I ever go back, I know what exactly it was that I drew and I can reference those photos again. Uh, this is uh, my fiance likes to play a very niche game called Disgaea, and this is one of the characters, uh, Flan, that's her name, and uh, she's basically an angel, but I think at one point in the games she gets, you know, demoted to a demon and she loses her wings. I thought it would be nice to like draw a very curvy version of her. Uh, with boobs <laughs> and a demon tail because that's one of the uh, running jokes is that Flan has like a lot of curves where Etna, who is her you know opposite in that game is flat chested so that was a pretty fun thing to draw and I think I have the anatomy pretty down this time it's not bad on this one uh, more fan art this one is of Jolanda from an old 90s game it was called Valkyrie Profile but she was a very stubborn princess with ringlets and like just such a child and um, she's kind of one of the characters that stood out to me so I decided to try and draw her and the anatomy is very wonky and I don't know what I was going for but you know it's not bad I inked it in so it must not have been horrible to me <laughs> Alright, so more fan art. This is of Garnet with her third eye and I decided to go for a very uh, almost African American theme here because you know she's kind of portrayed in the cartoon as a character of color although I guess all the gems could be characters of color but you know she leans heavily towards black culture with her fro and just her very calm and you know uh, stern mentorish demeanor so I went with uh, cornrow braids with uh, if you've ever seen them those gold cuffs that you can attach to them and I made it a very stylized very pretty version of her because I don't know, just, that's my style, so <laughs> I made her very girly, even though in the show she's not entirely girly. Uh, this drawing, just a random doodle, I think. I don't think this was really based off anything in particular, but I was messing around with Copic markers and colored pencil, which you can see in places where the colored pencil is just covering up the line art. But I was going for a very punk, pink, pixie theme. And yeah, so I actually went and used some colored shadows here that I was practicing in the beginning of the sketchbook. So leveling up a little bit. <laughs> I think it was just another experimentation sketch where I was looking at elephant ears which if anyone has ever seen those they have a very similar pattern on them and I decided to make a mermaid and turn her hair into a similar situation where it's just a lot of chunky pieces with some really interesting patterns 
And for whatever reason, I went with pink and green <laughs> for this. I guess to give it that otherworldly feel. Because, you know, I feel like mermaids are like that. Like, in shows and in cartoons and manga and things. They're very, they look human, but their coloring is very otherworldly and a little off. So, I went with green to kind of contrast pink and give it that otherworldly off sort of quality. Um, more fan art. This is Opal from Steven Universe. I think this is a fusion between, who is this? Yes, fusion between Amethyst and Pearl, I believe. But, I don't know, I must not have liked it all that much because I never did get around to coloring it. Or maybe I just didn't have the colors I needed because this sketchbook was back when I was starting you know, in the early stages of starting my Copic marker collection, so I likely didn't color it in because I didn't have the colors I needed. Because if I recall correctly, she's purple and her hair is white grayish, and I don't think I had had those colors at the time, which I do now. But you know, I rarely go back in my sketchbooks and recolor things. So here is just another doodle. I think I was experimenting with what my artwork would look like with just uh, thin lines and not really going back and, you know, adding that thick line dimension because I don't know if I have others in here. But yeah, like you'll see I have a lot of thick lines here, but I think in this case I was doing just thin lines to see if it really mattered because <laughs> I'm very much like someone who likes to really you know use their time well and I'm like you know if I'm adding all this dimension and you know thick and thin lines I feel like sometimes coloring it in just you know erases all that and it's like you spent an hour adding thick and thin lines and the color is just you know masking all of it so this was an experiment to see if it really mattered which you know looking at it I think it does like some thick and thin lines would have really done this better I believe I don't know it was a doodle so it could have also been my crappy coloring technique because it looks like I was also doing some very harsh shadow on her skin which you know it's not really doing this any favors plus whatever pen blue pen this is it is not a Copic marker because <laughs> it's so streaky so I think this was just a random doodle that, you know, kind of went sideways. <laughs> um, this one was just, you know, another doodle where I was messing around with doing uh, tattoos. Uh, but I think I figured out the trick for that is like the lighter the skin tone, the more I really need to use brown instead of black to sort of, you know, make it stand out less and blend in more because obviously the black tattoos are standing out way harshly and I always feel like tattoos have that very like blended look um yeah I mean you know especially when I see just straight you know outlines when it comes to tattoos it looks very much blended into the skin and it doesn't stand out all that much unless it's fairly new Okay, so here, I was doing some doodles of uh, Rini, or Wicked Lady, I guess, whichever you, I felt like doing at the time, because I do both. <laughs> I'll do, you know, the good version of Rini, and then the bad version sometimes, too. But, uh, yeah, I think I was messing around with lineless, uh, with lineless technique on her skin, which is okay. I mean, I think I was using a pink Colorace pencil, which works fine. It's just, I think it's a little jarring because I did line the hair, so it's a little bit of a push and pull that I don't particularly like, so. Uh, here, just more doodles. 
I must have went directly from this to that because you can see how the pins are drawing out and it's just very streaky. But I kind of like that effect. I think this is one of my favorite pages in the sketchbook because it's so raw and none of it is really, you know, polished, which I don't know, like that dried marker really gives it an interesting effect to me for some reason. And here with the full color on the back page. Uh, oh, here's the elephant ears I was talking about with their pattern. If anybody knows what these look like, my mother had a lot of these things. <laughs> so, yeah, basically more plant motifs and messing around with creating clothing with patterns and colors. I actually want to make a shirt like that one day that says thick because I'm curvy girl and I just think it looks awesome. So, like here. This is what I mean <laughs> specifically about, you know, just jumping into it and not having color schemes in mind because I think the orange and the green kind of like really puts the rest of the drawing off balance because the rest of it is very much a teal and pink look. So I like it, but this is what happens when I don't have a plan. Also, I tried to do a lot of, uh, I tried to soften the shading on her skin, which is interesting. I don't hate it, uh, but it's not usually my normal technique at all. It's something new that I tried and I mean, it was okay. I don't know. I don't hate it, but it's not something I would necessarily do again. Uh, this is my OC Jan and I really don't draw her that much very often, but I think in a lot of my older sketchbooks, I had a lot of uh, sketches of her, but uh, she has this big voluminous blue bob, and oh, that's basically her big characteristic. She has brown skin and a huge blue bob, <laughs> she looks like a throwback from an older time. And then here you will see just more figure sketches. I don't know. Uh, I just, I do this a lot too, where if I don't like something, I'll just skip to the next page. So you'll see a lot of figure drawing just impromptu because I was trying to draw something and it didn't work out. And rather than erase, I'll just skip to the next thing. All right, so here, oh, look at that. More sketches of Spectrum Noir. So I did, okay, so some of that must be in here somewhere. I lied. I thought it was all Copic, but apparently not. And if anyone has used Spectrum Noir, you know you have to swatch everything because a lot of them do not match the cap at all. <laughs> so you have a lot of colors that if you just straight put them down on the page without thinking about it, you are not going to get the color you think you're getting. Uh, this was from a contest I held on my Instagram. It was like some time ago. I think it was just for a couple packs of Spectrum Noir markers and some stickers. Which I need to do more uh, of those, but I just really haven't lately. Uh, this was a sticker idea. Another Geisha theme that really came out nice. I was using the gold gel pen and the white gel pen uh, in tandem and using that effect to where the white pen kind of bleeds into the marker so you get sort of a faded muted white, in this case pink. Uh, and I used some colored pencil in there but this was meant to be a sticker idea that I never did anything with but still looks good. Uh, this is more fan art. Uh, of Sailor Moon, one of the villains, and I'm probably going to get it wrong, but I think it's Sarah Sarah, one of uh, Rini's future uh, inner scouts. She's one of the Amazons, but she's the super girly one. And, uh, yeah, this is one of my first forays into a full body piece and trying to keep the colors minimal so that it looks decent. 
And I think this was the piece that I submitted into Girls Drawing Girls and I got accepted into their group uh, with this piece. So it's one of my favorites. The face is not perfect <laughs> if you really look at it, <laughs> but you know, from the neck down, I like everything else. So uh, again, using that muted feel with the white gel pens and it kind of made it more of a faded pinky blue, which went with the theme. So it's another one of my favorites in this, but I think I just got completely right for whatever reason. All right, and here is another piece of my OC. This time she's in mech armor because <laughs> I wanted to draw mech armor but I don't really do that very often so I kept it very simple. Uh, there's nothing really all like, complicated about it. Uh, she's wearing you know like a black skin tight bodysuit and then you have the armor that kind of snaps into place. I think it's more like a uh, bubblegum crisis scenario if anyone's ever seen that anime where they kind of like uh, slide into the suit and it's not really a uh, huge mech, like a Gundam mech. It's more like a small portable body mech scenario. So that was pretty fun. At some point I wanted to color it in, but again, I don't think I ever did. <laughs> uh, this was supposed to be another sticker idea because at the present time I have a fro and I just wanted something to represent that. And the idea that you're fluffed and dangerous <laughs> for any person that has, you know, unruly hair, you know, you fluff out your hair and you're a force to be reckoned with. And I think this was the precursor sketch to that, so I started here and then uh, redrew it over here. And it's just more sketches of plants and things. I think it was just a failed page, <laughs> so I just drew this initial sketch and then copied it over here to make it better. Uh, this is another one of my favorites. Uh, it was just a doodle to start off with, but I don't know. I really like the plants, the flowers that I did here, and the cactuses behind them. And I really like the way I did her eyes, and they're kind of squinty and, like, uh, very seductive. And that's not normally what I do. My eyes are usually like this, where they're just huge, bulbous eyes. So this was, like, <laughs> a revelation to me, like doing half open eyes that are like super you know thin and uh linear instead of the bulbous circular ones that I normally do uh so yeah I mean this is not there's nothing complicated about this but I think I just like it because the style came out so well and this is you know indicative of my normal style just very cartoony uh here just more weird sketches <laughs> of a head within a flower and I don't know at all where I was going with this <laughs> but I'm gonna assume it was a partially drawn sketch of a flower and I just added the head in later I don't know but <laughs> if you see in my sketchbooks you know that they're just like a lot of randomness just so much random okay so this is where I started Inktober for that year and it was a witch theme uh, and I don't know, somehow it got split up into pieces, I don't know, like I, I must have ran out of pages, but, okay, so I'm gonna turn sideways here, and the first drawing was yourself as a witch, so here's my fro, and basically this huge, like, headdress <laughs> that, you know, curves around my fro, and kind of has this African goddess type theme to it with oversized earrings which is actually typical for me I like oversized earrings for some reason a necklace collar I, I don't know but <laughs> it's just you know my idealized version of myself as a witch I think the second day was a male witch and I went with a very Asian theme here because uh I think because I don't really draw Asians a whole lot so I decided to go with that and the highlights on his hair are kind of chunky because I think that's an interesting thing you know Asians have such straight black hair that that's where that idea of super chunky highlights come from 
and I like that idea so I made his hair straight and kind of added some super chunky highlights which I then went in and filled in a little bit more because I don't like it when it's just straight white I want it a little bit more uh, subtle but yeah I think I used two different pens on this like I used a the Pentel Pocket brush pen for the large pieces of black but then I used a Micron for the thin highlight coverage and you can really see difference in the blacks there so I don't particularly like that but you know what can you do and here just more naked sketches only this time I think I had a jar of gold at some point and I just kind of like colored it all in in gold and then went back over it with white gel pen and I really like the effect it's really nice or well it might not have been gold it might have been bronze or something but uh those Dr. P.H. Martin's little bottles of ink and so this was just another experimentation I don't think I was really trying anything specific but you know sometimes I stumble on techniques like this that work and I use them later on in other sketchbooks so okay so we finally have a date I think this was 2016 <laughs> it's when the sketchbook happened and I was clearly drawing people from the Emmys that they had some really bright very uh, almost simple uh, gowns that they wore and I really like that like bright but simple you know not too over the top I think Sarah Paulson had like some really big shoulder pads on hers but you know for an award ceremony it was pretty simple but very vibrant and I like that all right so I'm back it turns out I deleted the last couple minutes of this off of my phone so I'm re-recording this part uh, this is uh, the other half of my Inktober and here I decided to do a uh, spirit witch and like <laughs> it's very much your stereotypical like you know he can summon spirits to come and attack you and mess up your life and it's very Asian inspired uh, this one was garden witch and I don't really think I could come up with anything so I just went with you know a growing seed and strawberries in her hair and you know her kind of having this ethereal look with uh, you know sort of like galaxy eyes that are kind of unfocused and very supernatural so for this part uh fashionista witch and that's pretty self-explanatory with her super fashiony clothes and her gemstone encrusted wand uh, this one was oracle and so i always thought it's cool you know when a person has multiple hands <laughs> so she's an oracle and she can see into the future and you know she has multiple hands that move around and I think the concept was that she's blind so having multiple hands to compensate and to see into the future um, yeah I don't know it just kind of came organically so I left it that way with three hands and then I also played around a little bit here with uh, messy mark making So next was Thread Witch. Uh, also pretty self-explanatory, messing around with bleeding effects with her hair. Uh, Blood Witch, and I'm pretty sure I definitely stole this blade from Kill a Kill, which I have never actually watched, but you know. I like the idea of the blade and the way it's shaped and how unique it is. So you can see her licking blood off the blade. This one is Fashionista. So she's wearing, I mean not Fashionista, uh, Lolita, sorry. She's wearing like very Lolita fluffy clothes and heart shaped glasses uh, and infusing her lollipop with magic. And this one was Demon Witch 
which if you've paid attention to any of my Instagram Inktober posts, you'll notice I draw this <laughs> every single Inktober because I like demons and onis and it just looks pretty cool. Alright. This one was Sunwitch. And so I decided to play around with that a little bit and make a guy instead. And have, you know, uh, his fro be the source of his power. And, um, I don't know. Because I think, like, and I didn't really do his skin very dark. But I know with dark skin characters, like, with deep, deep brown melanin skin, they tend to have this ethereal glow about them. So I think that's what I was going for. And I ended up making his fro black because doing all of his skin in black would have been a bit much. So now this one is Candy Witch. And that's pretty self-explanatory too with sprinkles and uh, candy corn, which is my favorite Halloween candy and peppermints and stuff. So... fairy witch I think so I decided to do it from the back so you can see her wings and the plant life growing out of her uh, this one is space witch again with an encrusted uh, wand and she's wearing like a space jumper <laughs> with her little icon on it and uh, yeah nothing more to say about that and this final one where I stopped at was, I want to say it was like Dark Witch or Princess Witch. I don't remember. One of those two. But I did a, a dark version of Sailor Moon. So maybe it was Dark Witch with all the hair and the Negamoon symbol. And that is where I stopped in the sketchbook. I didn't finish Inktober this time. This was probably like day 15 or something, 16. That's about as far as I get most of the time before I get behind. So hopefully y'all enjoyed this sketchbook tour. And I'll have to put more up as soon as I have time to film them. So later guys.